Good morning. It is Trinity Sunday, and we join with Christians around the world, celebrating and giving thanks for the God who created the world, for Jesus who came to be among us to teach, to love, and to inspire, and for the Holy Spirit who continues to strengthen us and give us courage to live out our faith. And so we say, O Lord, our God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Your glory is above the heavens and surrounds us in the world. And so we come to praise you. When we look at your heavens, the moon and the stars, the work of your hands, who are we to praise you? Yet you have made us in your image and set us in this world you love. And so we come to worship you and learn to care for your earth. Let us pray. Creator God, we gather with joyful hearts to remember all you have done for us and to seek your holy presence. You spoke and the world came into being in beauty and in balance between all things. In loving partnership, you made humankind in your own image and called us to walk with you in creation. When we wandered away, you came to us in Christ to show us how to live in this world and how to love you and each other more fully. Your Holy Spirit keeps coming to us to guide us, to guide us in the work of your kingdom. In all ways and for all time, you are with us. And so we worship you in love and gratitude, trusting that you will never leave us, ever three and ever one. Amen. And the collect for Trinity Sunday. Enfolding God, Trinity of love. You are our source, our goal, our life. May we be born again in you, no more to live alone and unconnected, but sharing the Spirit's breath, be carried to your heart through Jesus Christ, who lifts us up. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Meanwhile, the eleven disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed for the mountain Jesus had set for their reunion. The moment they saw him, they worshipped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day, right up to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of Christ. Amen. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I cannot help but think that our scripture reading for today has a message for us which is powerful and speaks directly to our world and to the situation we're in. But for us to get that, we have got to put it in context just a little bit. We need to understand that the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel does not begin at verse 16. We need to look a little bit at what goes on beforehand, and we need to understand that Matthew, at the end of his gospel, presents us with two groups and invites us to make a choice. During the 28th chapter, the resurrection has happened. 
the women have gone to the tomb and had the experience of resurrection with the angel who sent them on their way and said, go and tell the disciples that Jesus is going to meet them in Galilee. And off they went. And now listen, listen to what happened. The guards who had also experienced this moment, some of them went into the city and told the chief priests everything that had happened. After the priests had assembled with the elders, they devised a plan to give a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, you must say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. If it comes to the governor's ears, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and they did as they were directed. And this story is still told among the Judeans to this day. That group, that group of guards and priests of the elite of Jerusalem, of Pilate and the power of Rome, a group which is defined by privilege and power lies and deception, violence, oppression, and death. Matthew holds them up for us to see. The other group, Jesus and his disciples. Jesus and his group who were committed to the kingdom of God, who were committed to a new way of living, a new way of loving, a new way of being together, who were committed to doing their part to transform the world with Jesus. A group who came to Galilee, bringing with them their faith, their pain, their doubts, their uncertainty about the future, but they came. And Matthew holds these two groups up and says, So who do you want to choose? Who do you want to be aligned with? Make a choice. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of Caesar. Heaven or the empire. Light or darkness. Life or death. You choose and choose now. Now, to help in in making that choice, We need to understand that that Matthew's gospel from beginning to the end is filled with teaching about the kingdom of God and what it looks like, how you live into it, how you realize it. And, And the culmination of all of that teaching about the kingdom came in chapter 25. And we we heard these words, you know them well. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory All of the nations, and and that doesn't mean countries and flags. It means all races, all faces, all colors, all origin, because we're all God's children. All the nations will be gathered before him. He will separate people one from the other as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will say, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And listen to this, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visit me. At the end of the day, the question is, So how did the nations, how did the races do with the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and those in prison? How did they do relating to the victims of our society? And there's more. There's more. We have to understand and remember that this this story that we get in our gospel today takes place on a mountain. And you need to understand that in in Matthew, the mountain could be described as a thin place, a place where time and eternity, where heaven and earth brush up against one another. For Matthew, the mountain is the place where God is present. The mountain is the place where Jesus 
fully enters into his identity as son of man and son of God. In Matthew, the mountain, it's always about a charged moment, a defining moment, a kairos moment. It is always about a moment of holy possibility. So Jesus is on the mountain, this place of holy possibility, this place where God is present. And he says to his disciples, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. And make no mistake about it, that is a reference to the creation narrative. It is a reference to the time when heaven and earth were seen to be one entity, one single entity that was fractured by human sinfulness, fractured by human wrongdoing, by human behavior. And and as Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, the statement is being made that God has authorized Jesus, God has chosen Jesus, God has sent Jesus to be the one to heal the fracture between heaven and earth and to heal a broken humanity. And then he says to them, go. And, And that word go has the meaning of being led on a journey. He's saying to them, you're going to be led on a journey and wherever you go, You will confront all nations. You will confront people of all colors, of all races, of all faces. And wherever you go, train them to walk in my way. Train them to walk in the way of justice and and peace and love and mercy. Baptize them. And and remember, it, it was not at that point about building a church. It was about building a kingdom movement. Draw them into the movement. And and remember that baptism had two elements to it. The first was repentance. They would be called to repent of all of the behaviors and attitudes and agendas they had that got in the way of God's kingdom becoming realized. And the second part of baptism was going all in, going all in to follow in Jesus' way, to go all in to do their part to rescue the world from hatred and from violence and and oppression. And then he said to the men, no, know that I will be with you always. I am with you always to the end of time. You're not alone, you're not abandoned, you don't have to do it on your own. It's powerful stuff. And, and, And listen, I think it's important for us to get today that through the reading that we have and through the events Uh, of the last few weeks. I think we have all been taken to the mountaintop, folks. Oh, we have been given a vision of our world as it is. We have seen that Caesar is alive and well, wearing many faces in many places. And we have seen the empire with its oppression and violence in darkness, with his systemic racism and injustice, suffering and death. And it has been mind numbing. It has been so disturbing to see communities, countries, our globe standing up and saying, we cannot deal with this pain anymore. We cannot deal with this suffering anymore. We cannot deal with this abuse anymore. It has to end, it has to end. We have been given a view of that, a vision of that, and we can close our eyes and pretend it's not really there, but the world's been doing that for far too long. But listen, we've been taken to the mountaintop and and the mountaintop is a place of holy possibility, because we have also been given a vision of our world as it could be. We've been given a vision by our scriptures of a world in which there's room in the choir for all of God's children. We have been given a vision of a world in which words like justice and equality, love and and mercy, peace, kindness, 
They're not just empty words. They are the qualities that are lived out in human existence. We have been given a vision of what that might be like. But we need to choose. We need to choose the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Caesar. Heaven, the empire. Light or darkness, life or death. We need to choose. And we need to choose now. We will not, we will not experience the God of love and peace and mercy in our lives unless we are prepared to pursue love and peace and mercy in our lives. We cannot pretend that it is all going to just go away because it will not. Our future, our future will not be defined by the egregious faults and behaviors that have brought us to this point. It will not be defined by the inexcusable pain and suffering of so many in our communities, in our country, and in our world today. Our future will be defined by the choices that we make today. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of Caesar, heaven, the empire, light, darkness, life, death. The choice is yours, the choice is mine, but we must choose. Amen.
together we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us pray. God of our past and our future, God of healing and hope, we come before you with grateful hearts, trusting that you walk with us through all the times of our lives, including this strange time of illness and isolation, of unrest and tension. You are still the God of our history and God of the world you love, so hear us as we pray for your world and the people around us. We remember today those who face danger and despair in these times, those who suffer the effects of coronavirus in their lives and in the lives of loved ones, those living with hunger while the world is distracted, those caught up in unrest and violence despite the pandemic and all whose lives are directed by forces beyond their control. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those working to relieve suffering of many different kinds and to bring justice and peace to those most vulnerable. Especially, we pray for all Rachel and unrest, suffering of the victims of violence and both in the United States and our own town country. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those facing fear or frustration and those wrestling with sorrow or discouragement. We remember those who live with illness, disability, or pain day by day and all who know the grief and struggle of bereavement. We pray for all those who work to bring healing and comfort to those who suffer, remembering those who put their own health and life at risk during the pandemic. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who feel helpless or hopeless in this present time of such uncertainty for those facing unemployment or struggling to make ends meet, for those caught up in misunderstanding or broken relationships, and for those working through situations of conflict at home or at work. We pray for all who offer guidance and support in the midst of such difficulties. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our past and our future, God of healing and hope, hold us together in the days ahead and remind us of our common faith in Christ. Help us learn from the challenges we are going through to find new ways of living out our faith and new ways of being in community. Support all of your children in their efforts to engage in questions and choices with respect and faithfulness, trusting that you can do new things for us and with us. Keep us loving and gracious in the example of Jesus, our Lord and friend. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now joining our prayers and praises together, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Peace of God, 
which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love and pray for today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leading on the everlasting Everlasting arms